Hi, I'm Dr. Jim Nikolai. And I'm Julia Casca, and this is Zen Fitness 30 with Bionic. This is windshield wipers. So you're gonna come down onto your mat and separate your feet a little bit wider than the mat, right to the edge, and then lie down onto your back, looking straight up to the sky. Take your arms out to what I call cactus arms, so 90 degrees at the elbow. And then you really wanna put some emphasis here on pressing the back of your forearm, back of your wrist, and the back side of the hand fully down into your mat. And then take a little pelvic tuck here, so tilting your pelvis. And we're gonna use the four count breath. We're gonna inhale over on four counts to the right. And then you're gonna take the exhale for four counts back up to center. And repeat on the other side, inhaling over for three, two, one. Exhale and bring it back up for four counts. The whole time maintaining the tuck in the pelvis and keeping that easy rhythm going. Right, we're making this meditative movement. You should feel a nice stretch beginning to open up the front of your chest and beginning to feel the lower abdominals activate here. And it's gonna be a wonderful release for your lower back and for your hips. Let's try one more time over to your left side. And of course, four counts to come back to center, to center. This is butterfly stretch and lift. So for our butterfly stretch and lift, you're gonna lower yourself down onto your mat and then bring the soles of your feet together and just let your thighs fall out to the side. Come down onto your back fully and bring your elbows to a 90 degree angle and then rotate your arms so you're bringing the forearm, the wrist, and the back of the hand down to the ground. And you really wanna emphasize pressing down into this area throughout the entire movement. We're gonna tuck our pelvis and hold that tuck. You'll notice that when you tuck your pelvis, your thighs lift up naturally with the movement of the pelvis. So now the stretch portion comes in holding the tuck but pressing the thighs down at the same time. You'll feel nice activation in the gluteals and the outside of the thighs here. So that's the stretch portion of the butterfly. We're gonna take four counts to inhale and we're gonna take four counts to exhale, just holding that and breathing. Let's do one more round, inhaling for four, three, two, and one, and exhale it out for four, three, two, and one, and release. Now, we're gonna build on that and add the lifts in. So you're gonna tuck and hold and take four counts to lift up, and then four counts to lower yourself back down, keeping the breathing going. So we're inhaling to lift, and exhaling to lower. As you're lifting, you're still pushing down into the outside of the thigh, so our pelvis is tucked, we're lifting it up, and we're pushing our thigh bones down towards the ground simultaneously. So here's where we're gonna put the stretch and the activation of the butt and the abductor muscles are the outsides of the thighs. Keeping that breath going for our meditative movement. Maintaining the tuck of the pelvis. My trainer tip for you is as you're lowering, think about still squeezing the butt up towards the ceiling so you're not just releasing the muscles on the way down. One more time, inhaling and lifting up on four counts. And exhale and lowering yourself all the way back down. This is thigh extenders. Start on your mat. Take your left leg and extend it out in front of you. And the entire time, I would like you to think about pressing that leg down into the ground with a pointed foot. So our leg is actively reaching and pressing into our mat. And then slide your hands around your right quad and lift up very tall out of your hips. And then you're gonna begin to extend the leg up. You're gonna take four counts to exhale and reach the leg up. And four counts to lower it back down. Exhaling up for four counts. And then inhaling down for four counts. So as that leg is lifting up, your body's gonna to wanna to slouch. Your job is to sit up taller as the leg extends. On the last one, slide your hands up and grab onto the top of your foot. If your hamstrings are tight and you can't reach the foot, you can just take a towel and wrap it around your foot to extend your arms longer. Then maintain the leg height here as you release the leg, and on the exhale, draw the abs in and begin to roll yourself back down onto the mat, only as far as you can go to control it. And then on the inhale, take the four counts to roll yourself up. Grab a hold of the foot and pull up into that stretch again. Exhale, rolling yourself back, controlling the movement, matching the movement to your breath, and then inhale and rolling back up. Give that extra last little stretch and release down. Switch sides. So stretch your right leg out, point the toes, press the leg firmly down into your mat. 
Slide your hands behind your quad and sit up nice and tall. Exhale, four counts to lift up. Remember to sit tall out of your hips. And then inhale, release down. It looks much different to control the release, right? If I wasn't, it would just come down. You want to extend and reach the body and then resist. One more time. Exhale, sitting up tall, reaching the leg up. And then slide the hands all the way up to the top of the foot. Flex your foot, pull yourself deeper into the stretch, and then maintain the height of the leg and roll yourself down. Exhale, scoop those abs in deeply as you roll yourself back up, grabbing a hold of your foot and pulling into the stretch. Again, keep the foot level, exhale, and rolling down. So as you're rolling down, try to scoop deeper into your abdominals. And then inhale, and roll it back up. Grab a hold of the foot, pull into the stretch. This is Rotated Runner. For our rotated runner, I would love if you would use a, a hand towel. Just roll it up, something like this, and place your hands about shoulder width apart. And then we're going to come up onto our knees, uh, transitioning so that both of your knees are at 90 degree angle. And the emphasis, really, the most important part of this exercise to get the maximum benefit is you want to keep a pelvic tuck throughout the entire movement. So at no point are you letting the hips sink back behind you. You're tucking and letting the tailbone tilt down towards the ground. Okay? And then we're going to bring your arms up in front of you and bring them right up and overhead, trying to maintain the biceps in line with your ears. We're going to take the four count inhale to come forward, feeling a stretch across the left hip and thigh, and then exhale back on the four counts. Inhaling forward and exhaling back. Now building on that, we're going to go forward, but we're going to keep the arms behind us and exhale it back. Trying to keep the belly button drawing into the spine as you inhale and lean forward and exhaling it back. On the next one, we're gonna hold it. We're gonna build into the rotated runner now. We're lunge forward, our arms are slightly behind us, our pelvis is tucked, and on the exhale, we're gonna take four counts to rotate, and all the way back to center. And then exhaling over, three, two, one, and inhale it back. One more time. Exhaling, three, two, one, and inhale it back, and returning to center. And let's try the other side. Bring the left foot forward and the right knee back. Again, make sure your knees are at 90 degrees. Tuck the pelvis and then take the towel up in front of you and up overhead. Keeping the tuck in the pelvis, inhaling as we come forward. Exhaling and drawing ourselves back. Inhale down and exhaling it back. As we come forward this time, hold the arms behind you, getting a deeper stretch across the front of the chest. My trainer tip for you here is to feel the shoulder blades slide down your back. A little extra bonus for you. Next one, hold it forward. And then on the exhale, take four counts to rotate towards the front knee and inhale back to center. Exhale, twisting, and inhale it back. One more time. Keep the tuck in the pelvis. And then back to center, tuck the pelvis and pull yourself all the way back. This is Rainbow Side Extensions. Place your left hand towards the top of your mat. You also do have the option to come down onto your forearm, okay? And that'll just make it a little bit easier and feel more supported if you're just getting started in your workout routine. The other option you have is where your feet are gonna be placed. So if, again, if you're newer to working out, you have a couple options. You can actually keep your knees down on the ground, okay? That would sort of be the beginner version, like this or even like this. And then a little bit more advanced than that is to stagger the feet with the bottom leg slightly in front of the back foot. So when you come up, you have more balance because your feet are wide. And then if you're more advanced and you're working out, we're looking to challenge yourself to the next level. You actually stack your feet up, okay? So I'm gonna actually do my feet stacked. And keeping your hand firm, connecting with our breath, we're gonna take the full four counts to inhale and lift all the way up into what we think of as a side plank. But here, for our Zen Fitness 30, we're gonna take it a little bit further. And on the exhale, we're gonna to continue to lift our hips and take the top arm overhead. So we're getting this nice, long, lateral stretch in our body. And we're gonna take the full four counts to inhale back to center. Exhaling up. And inhaling back. My trainer tip here for you is as the arm comes overhead, imagine that you're reaching towards a point above your mat and stretch out through those fingers. You'll feel an amazing stretch across your lats and the side body here and then inhale back. Then we're gonna take one step further. You're gonna take the top leg off and bring it behind you. Don't just place it down, really reach the leg to the back corner of the mat. 
and then lift those hips up. You're gonna feel a deeper stretch across the front of your right hip, your hip flexors. And again, exhaling over. And then inhale all the way back down to your mat. Stack your legs up and hold on to your shin. Your other arm comes up and over and we'll do an opposing stretch the opposite direction. This is buttocks lift. You're gonna come down onto your shins, and I'm gonna give you two options here. You can either keep your top of your foot flat like this, or you can tuck your toes under, so you're resting on the ball of your foot. And both are great options. It really is just about what is deeper stretch for your feet. I'm gonna keep my feet here, because this is definitely the stretch that I need. And my knees are a little bit wider than hip width, okay? And you're gonna bring your arms up directly in front of you. I want you to think about tucking your pelvis slightly, but really more of the emphasis is about pulling the belly button into your spine, so you're keeping your entire torso lifted and upright. And then you're gonna hover your buttocks right above your heels, and then they're not gonna come back down again. They have to stay there throughout the exercise. We're gonna take the full four counts to come up as we're bringing our hips up and over our knees. And then we're gonna take the four full count, exhale to come down. Inhale, coming up. Think about not just bringing your hips up, but actually pushing your pelvis forward so you're bringing your hips over your knees, almost like you're gonna topple forward. And keep that steady pace, matching the movement with your breath, four counting to lift, and four counts to exhale and come back down. You're gonna feel a nice, warm, burning, stretching feeling in the front of your thighs, and also your butt muscles nice and activated here. Let's try one more together. Inhale, coming up, four, three, two, one. Get very tall in that posture, and then keep that height in your posture as you lower all the way back down. This is breath walking. So breath walking is an amazing way to meditate, but you can do it actively. When you meditate actively, you create something called active calm, meaning you're focused but you're also vibrant, you're energized. And as opposed to sitting down to meditate where it might be more relaxing, this is also a way to do meditation in a way that keeps you up and energized, vibrant, as well as being able to do something that creates a meditative state, but doing it in real time in the real world. So breath walking starts with the breath. There are two forms of a breath I wanna teach you. They both have a four in and four out ratio. Very simple, very easy. Most of us can breathe four in and four out. The first breath is called the wave breath. And very simply, it's just breathing in and out smoothly to a count of four. So it's in for four, out for four. You can breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. You don't have to, but that's the way I like to do it. The next breath is what I call stair breathing. And very simply, it's just taking that four in and four out count, but dividing it into four little blocks in and four little blocks out. So it looks like this. In for four in short pieces. Out for four in short pieces just like that. So once we get done with breathing and figuring out the breath work, what we have to do is figure out how to pattern it or sync it with our stride. The best way to learn this is to use the stair breathing because essentially you end up marching out breaths. So with each step, you're gonna get an in or an out. It looks like this. You can make it fast or slow, depending on how you want to walk and how you can figure out your breath to match it to that stride. But remember, if you get messed up, if you stop, if you suddenly lose your count, all you have to do is start over with first breath equals first stride. And that's how you breath walk. Here's a great way to get deeper into your breath walking practice by learning mantra and mudra. Mantra and mudra are great ways to help keep your focus. You know, it's really easy to let your mind wander, even with breath walking. And if you need something to 
put you back into the moment, you can use these techniques. Mantra is something that you say. It's very simply syllables in four out patterns because you can't really talk while you're inhaling. So it's something that you're gonna do on the exhale. And if you're thinking about it in a stair pattern, it's just but you say something in that four count. It can be a syllable. So in Kundalini Yoga, there are four syllables, sa, ta, na, ma, S-T-N-M, sa, ta, na, ma. So it looks like sa, ta, na, ma. You can also say any kind of positive affirmation that fits into that four pattern. So I love things like I love my life. This is a good day. Or anything that you find fits into the rhythm where you're speaking and as you're talking, your thoughts go away. With mudra, mudra is simply tapping your fingers. And so remember, you've got a thumb and four fingers and the rhythm is four. So essentially, you can do this any way you want to. I usually teach people one of two ways like that, and then back to here. So it's, and then back. Or you can go forwards and backwards. So it can look like this. Now remember, you don't have to walk like this, right? So as you're walking, your hands are gonna be like this, but your fingers are making those movements as you're walking. So it looks like this. Sa ta na ma. I love my life. And that's mantra and mudra.